This video provides a quick start guide to CMAP tools. Before getting into the tool, let's clarify some important terms. Concept, link and link label. Suppose we are representing this piece of knowledge that electronic computers have central processing units. Suppose we want to represent this in a concept map. We might represent it as shown in this diagram. Now in this diagram we have concepts and those are electronic computers that's one concept central processing unit is another concept and the two are connected by means of a link the line that's connecting the two is a link and finally we have the word have written on top of the link and that's called as the link label taken in its entirety the piece of knowledge that electronic computers have central processing units the totality of that is what we call as a proposition so we have covered the important terms concept, link, link label and proposition. Looking at it a little bit more generally, when we have two concepts connected by means of a named link, we have a proposition. And extending it a little further, a concept map is nothing but a collection of propositions expressed in diagrammatic form. Even though we have numerous diagramming tools available, we chose CMAP tools. Why did we choose this tool? First of all, this is a free tool and obviously that's convenient. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, this is a drawing tool that is specialized for concept mapping. With those preliminaries out of the way, let's jump into the tool. If you're using Windows and you open CMAP tools, you'll see something like this initially. That is, it comes up with two windows. The one on the left hand side essentially shows us all the concept maps that we have created thus far and you can see here that I have created one concept map. In your case this list will be empty and all you'll see is my CMAPs. The window on the right is used for creating and modifying concept maps. So this is our drawing window. This is a list of all the concept maps that we have created. On Windows, there's a small glitch in the sense that everything that you do on this particular window, that is concepts that you create and so on, they come out to be really small. This should be a temporary glitch that they will fix in future releases. In the meantime, you can use the zoom option here and zoom to about 200% and everything will be fine. The product is available for both Mac and Windows. The only discernible difference between the two is the menu. On the Windows version, you see the menu on each of the windows separately. On the Mac version, there's just a common menu on top. In fact, as I show you the demos, I'll be using a Mac version and you will see the common menu rather than the menus on each of the windows. Let's take a look at the concept map that we will be drawing. So here we are showing that Excel is a spreadsheet program. Excel succeeded some early spreadsheet programs, some examples of which are VisiCalc, SuperCalc and Lotus123. So this shows several of the important features that we would need to learn in order to create generic concept map. Let us now see how to create a blank concept map. I'm going to launch CMAP tools. And in this case, you see that it has come up with just one window as opposed to two windows that would happen on a Windows machine. Uh, no matter. All I have to do is to say file, new CMAP, and I get the second window. Okay, so on Windows you already have the second window and therefore by default you have a new concept map, a blank concept map available. Let us now take a look at how we can add a concept into an existing blank concept map. If for any reason you see that only the left window, the navigation window has opened and the second window has not, all you have to do is to use the menu here and say file new CMAP and you'll get a blank concept map. To create a new concept or to add a concept to a concept map, all you have to do is to double click to create a concept. So wherever you double click, that's where it's going to create a concept. So I'm going to go ahead and create our first concept, namely Excel. So I double click and it's come up with the concept. The four question marks would replace the name of the concept. Uh, so all I have to do when the concept is selected is to start typing the name. So I type, so that's done. And then in order to accept the value, I just click somewhere outside and it accepts the value. So we have created a concept called Excel. If I want to create another concept somewhere else, I can double click and create it just as I did with the earlier one. As simple as that. Now that we have a concept, 
Let's take a look at how to create a proposition. The tool actually provides us two different ways in which we can create propositions. Let's take a look at the first approach. When you created a concept, you saw that right above the concept is a set of arrows, two arrows. We can use that to create a proposition. The first approach is to simply click and drag the arrow and drop it wherever we want and that creates a skeleton of a proposition. All we have to do is to fill in the name of the linked concept and also the link label. So since the link label is highlighted, uh, let's type in the name for it. So I'm going to call it Ezer and here I'm going to select it and type spreadsheet program. Right, I want program to be on the next line because I don't want the concept to become very wide. So I'm just going to put enter spreadsheet program and then click anywhere outside and we have created the proposition. Let's now take a look at the second approach to creating a proposition. This time, instead of dragging the arrow from the first concept, what we are going to do is to create a new concept and then create the link between them. So this time we wanted to say that Excel succeeded early spreadsheet programs. So I want to create a concept here and again I do that by double clicking. I want to say early spreadsheet programs. So now we have the second concept and this time I'm going to click on Excel here and drag and drop the link onto early spreadsheet programs. So this time it recognizes that there's already a concept at the end of the link and it highlights only the proposition, uh, the, uh, the link label. And I want to say Excel succeeded, which is came after early spreadsheet programs. To clarify our concept maps, we may want to show arrows on the links to indicate directionality. Let's see how to do that. When you created the first concept, you might have noticed that a third window came up and this window is called as the style palette. We can use the style palette to affect various display characteristics. So for example, if uh, we want to change, let's say the background color in our concept, we can click on the concept and then go over to object and change some of its characteristics. I'm not going to go into all the details, but you know that you can use this to make your diagrams somewhat pretty. Okay, so let's move to our purpose, which is to add an arrow at the end of a link. So here I'm going to select this and it's the, at the end of this, we want to have an arrow. So now that this object is selected, I want to go and select line here. And here's the part that controls arrowheads. You have several options. And we uh, let's say I want to have arrowheads only when the line ends at a concept. In other words, I don't want to an have an arrowhead going from Excel to Ezer and again Ezer to spreadsheet program. I just want to have it at the end of the, uh, the second concept, the, at the second concept. Okay. So that option there for to do that is here. It says draw arrowheads if the connection ends at a concept. So the moment I click that, you see that an arrowhead appears here. I can do the same for this as well. Okay, so by default, at least initially, it comes up with no arrows. And if you want to add arrows, you can do it the way I have shown it. In our current situation, I only had two links on which I wanted to add arrowheads. And it was all right to do them one by one. Okay, what if we have created a diagram that's got, let's say, 20 links. And we want to now add arrowheads at the end of each of those links. Right, then doing it one by one could end up being tedious. So what I want to do is to show you a way by which you can do it in bulk. So here I'm going to go and undo the two changes I made and create the, remove the two arrowheads that I got. So now we are back to the situation where there are no arrowheads. Now you can drag a rectangle around a diagram and select various concepts. So I'm going to, you know, I'm drawing a rectangle by clicking and dragging. So when I did this, the complete diagram got selected. That is whichever portions are encompassed by the rectangle, they get selected. And then when I click on this arrow selection, I get both the arrows selected. So that's another way to select objects and move them around and so on. Now that you know how the style palette works, you can experiment with it to change fonts and colors and shadows and do all kinds of things. Let's move on now to create this part of the concept map. Here we are saying early spreadsheet program, example busy calc, early spreadsheet program, example super calc and so on. 
So this link is a little bit different from the earlier two links in the sense that here we are creating the first proposition and from its link label we are directly branching to other concepts to share the link label. Okay. Obviously, we could create completely separate links with example for each of them, but that would only add clutter to our diagram. So let's see how to branch from a link label. Okay, so let's create the first proposition, early spreadsheet program example VZCalc. Let's type in here example. And I'm select this and type VZCalc. Okay, now we want to branch off from the link label instead of from the concept. So I select the link label. Notice that that too has branching, has arrows. So we can directly use that and say VZCalc and then here SuperCalc and then go again once more, branch from there to say Lotus123. With simple concept maps, we don't need to worry too much about how the diagram is laid out. However, with complex maps, we need to pay more attention to this as otherwise the diagram will become too difficult to comprehend, even for the author of the diagram. We can use the auto layout feature of CMAP tools to achieve nice layouts. Just to illustrate auto layout, I have gone and messed up the layout of our diagram considerably and you can see that already even this simple concept maps looks a little difficult to, to grasp. In order to do uh, invoke auto layout, I'm going to first click here, then go to format, auto layout, and here the default auto layout is hierarchical. I'm going to stay with that. We won't talk right now about the force directed layout. So it's a hierarchical and then it says uh, horizontal hierarchy. I don't want that. I want to have vertical hierarchy with the hierarchy going down. And then it says nodes per level unlimited, which is uh, the default is good enough unless our map is extremely complex. And then the line shapes. Uh, by default, it says the line shapes are straight which is fine. We could choose either of these other things as well. You could experiment with them. Let's just keep stick to the defaults. And then I can say generate new layout and then I say OK. And then here you can see that it has generated the new layout which looks a lot prettier than what we had created. And best of all, we didn't have to worry too much about it as we were creating the concept map. Let's see how to save our concept maps. Currently we can see that our concept map has not been saved. It's untitled 2. Uh, to save it, we just say file, save CMAP, and then give it a name. I'm going to call it as about Excel. And then we give a focus question. And that's it. And what it does is, it always saves the concept maps under my, my CMAPs. And this my CMAPs is a folder which is under your documents folder. So that's where it's going to be. Uh, so far, I have not seen any way to save your concept maps elsewhere. So it's always going to go here. CMAP tools allows us to export our concept maps as images or as PDF files. To export a concept map, use File and then Export CMAP as and select the option that you want. You can enhance your skills by visiting the CMAP tools website. To access the CMAP tools website, just go to Help, CMAP tools help. The help site gives you a lot of documents on learning how to use the tool. But furthermore, you can get into docs and support and then you can get into help videos and you can get a lot of videos as well. This completes our quick start guide to CMAP tools. Be sure to check out our following video showing some advanced features.